Hey, everybody, uh, let's get into it. This is the lecture on WordPress, uh, particularly the WordPress dashboard. Uh, this lecture is intended to give you everything that you need to have a working knowledge of the WordPress content management system. Uh, what you learn in this lecture will carry through the rest of the weeks of this course. And um, over time, you'll become more efficient and more knowledgeable on WordPress. I am going to cover the basics. I am not going to cover specific plugins. This lecture is not going to cover Divi Builder. All right, that will be a separate and subsequent lecture. Um, this is just all about how to access your website, how to log in, and how to manipulate the dashboard. And hopefully this background halo uh, isn't too distracting. Uh, I've been experimenting with some video. And uh, also I do have captions set up. I hope that they are relatively correct or somewhat accurate. If they are not, I apologize, but uh, making this uh, as accessible as possible is really important to me. So let's get into it. I'm going to disable my video and share my screen. And let's take a look. So in your Blackboard shell, and again, this looks a little bit different. So let's enter the student preview. In the Blackboard shell, we are going to click on course modules. Hold on one second. All right, we're good. We're gonna click on course modules and then go to assignments. In this area, you'll see your WordPress website project. So please make sure you review the criteria for that. Pardon me. And you're going to see the Divi Builder theme and plugin, which we'll get to later. You'll also see the Divi API access. Again, that's the second lecture. Hopefully you've watched the FTP lecture at this point. Again, not entirely necessary for this course, but I at least want you to know that it is available. And then down here, uh, you're going to see the website URL. Uh, section. So you should see your name in this folder. Um, by folder, I mean, this is the domain. And these are all of the folders inside of it, but that's represented by public underscore HTML. So if it says public HTML, that means it's public. So your domain will break down to be ccac.studentsofdesign.com slash Valerie Bennett slash s Allegro slash R dump face. Uh, I'm sorry, Thompson. Um, moving down, uh, you can see the WordPress sandbox site access. So this is available for you if you want to try new things, try um, some different plugins or themes. This is my personal uh, website within our, our course experience. Feel free to manipulate it as you like. Just know that any one of you can access this at any time. Uh, and in fact, some of you can be installed, uh, I'm sorry, uh, logged in at the same time, installing different plugins and themes simultaneously. So I would try sticking to just your domain. Moving down, you'll see your website address. You'll see your username for that website, as well as your email and then your password. Each one of you has a different password. I would recommend logging in and changing your password as soon as you can. And I'll show you how that's done in this lecture. All right. So I'm going to go to the sandbox site. And the first thing to look at here is the location. So this is where your website lives on the internet. You actually will need to copy and paste. You can't right click on this. So go ahead and copy and paste that into a browser. And that will call up your WordPress website. To log into your WordPress website, you always need to type in slash WP hyphen 
admin after your folder name. So here I'm going to type in wp hyphen admin. That'll give me the login prompt, at which point I'm going to copy and paste that into place. And then check remember me so it mitigates the amount of times you have to log in. All right, so we're in. This is the WordPress dashboard. Welcome. This is the WordPress dashboard as um, delivered by SiteGround. Okay, so if you happen to buy your own hosting plan that isn't on SiteGround, this will look differently. All right, but let's take a look around. So when you first log in, you're going to hit the dashboard. You're going to have your primary navigation on the left. This is for all manner of internal editing in your site. The top is going to take you to wordpress.org or to your homepage. You can also have shortcut links up here. If you happen to install plugins, they may show up at the top. They will definitely show up in the left hand side navigation as well. Um, moving down, again, this is what SiteGround is showing you, but you may see something different. Um, there are different bits of information here, things that are happening with the community, things that are happening with technology, with SiteGround. It's a catch-all for learning and understanding of the community and your website, okay? So I'm just going to hit this button. That's fine. It's not going away. Um, Right hand corner, you're going to see your user information. You can edit your profile, you can add an avatar. That's all well and good. And then down here, you're going to see the WordPress version. Um, and then, yeah, let's switch to default. There we go. This is mostly what you're gonna see. So this is a this is really the default. So hit that switch to default button at the bottom when you log in and you'll get the this dashboard, but you could also use the simplified dashboard if you want. But generally, you're going to log in and you're going to see your site health status at a glance, activity, quick draft, uh, custom dashboard, and then this drag box is here. So you can actually move these things around if you like. You can stack them on top of one another or you can collapse them. You can collapse the ones that you don't use that frequently and then thereby maximize the ones that you do use frequently. I use site health status and at a glance and activity frequently. So generally I get rid of these. Well, how do you get rid of these? And more importantly, how do you add new ones? So you can click screen options and you can actually turn all of these off. So now nothing loads, but again, I recommend site health status at a glance and activity at a minimum. When you add new plugins, click that screen options on the dash on the home screen here and you may see more options. Okay, so this hasn't populated yet, but the site health status is essentially that. It tells you what the status of your site is. It's health. Is it good, bad, worse? Um, is it beyond repair? It, this will tell you. You need to make sure that your site health status is always set to good. It doesn't have to be 100% good, but it has to be good. It has to be in the green. At a glance is going to tell you how many pages or posts or images or other files you have in your site. It's going to tell you what WordPress version you're running and what theme you're running. And then activity, if you have multiple users on your site, you're gonna be able to see what they're doing here. This is particularly useful if you have a client who's editing their own website and you wanna see what they're doing because clients are notorious for breaking things. So um, this will be useful in that respect. Okay. So on the left-hand side, you see the dashboard. We're on the home screen. The next button here is updates. You will see a notification icon, little red circle with a number in it if there are updates to be had. You've got the latest version of WordPress and it tells you that matter of factly, all of the plugins are up to date, all of the themes are up to date. 
whenever a new WordPress version comes out, I generally recommend waiting a week or two, especially to update it, especially if you have a lot of plugins, which I'll get into. If you have a lot of plugins and none of them have been updated to be compatible with the latest version of WordPress, do not update WordPress. Things will break, okay? In fact, I experienced that this morning and I had an, a, a holy crap moment. So that was fun. Um, but take my, take my advice and don't rush to update your plugins and themes and your WordPress version. Although I do advocate for doing so as quickly as you practically can for security reasons. So you just got to feel it out. It's a balance, okay? The next section is posts which are time-sensitive blog posts on your website. Um, posts are meant to be temporary. They are not static or fixed like a page is. A page is always available. Media, this is where your uh, media library is, where you'll upload images, Word documents, and PDFs. In terms of images, they accept JPEGs, GIFs, and uh, PNGs, PNG files. Do not upload videos into this space. And in fact, uh, when we go into that section, you'll see that there are space uh, limitations that you have to observe. The next section is pages. Uh, it functions very similarly to posts, except pages, like I said, are evergreen, fixed, static. They don't move. They're always available on your website. Pages are generally found in the navigation uh, within the header of the website. The next section is comments. Um, if you want people to comment on your blog posts or your pages, you can enable this. Uh, but this is where you would moderate, edit, or delete any comments that are made on your site. I generally recommend that you do not add comments to any aspect of your WordPress website because it's a pain. And it's mostly spam bots these days. People aren't really contributing. Um, it's a nice feature to have, but it's kind of pointless. The next section is appearance. This is where you'll control themes. You'll customize those themes. A theme in this case would be Divi Builder. Uh, you can control widgets, affect your navigation menus, and even change the background. This is something that you will not use with Divi Builder. The next section is plugins. So some of you may be aware of uh, plugins like Google Analytics, which tells you who's visiting your site, how, when, and where. Um, I, I will show you how to install those as well as the proper etiquette for um, plugins. Users, this is where you can control your profile. You can add new users. You can set their, their administrative levels here. If you want multiple people to edit your website, this is the place to do it. Tools. Um, this is, again, this is where site health is contained, but also this is where um, you can import data or content from a WordPress, another WordPress site, or a Tumblr blog, or blogger, or live journal, or you can export your content from your website to um, another WordPress site or one of those other uh, sources that I mentioned. The next section is settings. This is where you control the site name, um, some of the URLs. This is where you control um, what types of comments uh, and discussion, um, what page is the home page. We'll get through it. SiteGround Optimizer and SiteGround Security are absolutely required. So please do not disable them. Uh, they are necessary for the hosting of your site. If you delete them, I can't guarantee that your site will run well or efficient, and I may have to re-enable those plugins. I am not going to go over these two plugins, however. If you are curious and interested, I can cover that in a separate lecture, but for the most part, I am uh, not covering these because they are not a part of a typical WordPress installation. They are specific to SiteGround, which is a great thing. It's a nice value add. Um, but you won't get these with, with Bluehost or someone else, okay? So let's go up to the top. Let's go to posts. And then within this flyout menu, menu, excuse me, you'll see all posts, add new categories and tags. All posts is where you will view all the posts that you make. If 
you want to add a new post, you can hit this button here, post add new, or you can go to the addition sign and hit new post. If you want to add categories for your posts, so categories help end users sort through your posts based on different categories. So if I have a category that's on UX design, I would create that category here. Tag words functions similarly to categories, except uh, it's another mechanism for categorization. In this particular method, you would use keywords. So this would be based on a keyword search. Let's go ahead and add or go to all posts. And each post will have a title, an author, a category, a tag word, comments, and a date. Okay. You can use screen options to turn these things off. They will still generate that content. You can change the view if you want. You can even increase the number of items per page. So if you have a very busy blog, you can set that to 30 or 100. I usually set it to 100. And that way I can see all of my blog posts in one foul swoop uh, versus having to go through the pagination and go page one, page two, page three. So let's go ahead and hit add new post. Again, that's another way to create a post. So we'll hit add new. And this is going to bring up the block editor. Okay, now the block editor is important and I'll demonstrate it for the purposes of this lecture, but you will likely not be using the block editor because you're using Divi Builder and Divi Builder will disable the block editor. So basically uh, with this theme as it's set up, you can add your title, you can add your copy. Let's go to Bacon Ipsum and pull some fake copy, a Meteor Lorem Ipsum generator for those that, uh, of you that are familiar. So let's grab some copy and we'll edit. We'll drop that in there. And you can actually select these individual words and apply different header styles. You can convert it into a list, a quote. You'll see the preview on the right hand side, um, what that may look like where appropriate. You can choose heading, make that really big, make it small. Um, if you want to add another section, you can just hit the addition sign, choose new paragraph paste that in. You can select individual words, bold them. You can align some things. You can make hyperlinks, have those open in a new tab. And then if you hit the vertical ellipses, you'll see some other options here, particularly edit as HTML. Or if you don't like this block of text, you can just remove it. So this is called the Gutenberg editor and the Gutenberg editor, the block editor is really intended to be a easier, an easier way for you to edit your website. Um, Divi Builder makes it even easier. Um, so you won't be relying on the block editor as much, but you may find that you don't like Divi Builder and you want to instead use the block editor and that's totally fine. Um, but yeah, you've got all of the options here in the world, paragraph, add a header, make lists, make quotes. You can add HTML code if you want. It's all going to drop inside of a different box. You can add media like an image or a gallery, a file. You can even add video. And you can add buttons and designs and all manner of things. I'm not going to dive into this too deeply because, again, our focus in this course is Divi Builder. So that's what we're going to focus on. OK, so you can test this out. Honestly, one of the best ways to learn the block editor is to just experiment with it. Test it out, have fun, break things, make new pages, make new posts with the blog editor. What I wanna focus on now is actually over here in the sidebar. So um, right over here, you see save draft, preview and publish. 
So if you like what you've made here, I'm just gonna drop in some text. You can save the draft. Now, when you save a draft, the site is going to automatically generate a permalink or the website address based on the title of the post. So it automatically generates as soon as you save the draft. Okay, just be aware of that because you can always rename this and then save the draft again and your new URL will be intact. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so um, moving on, let's start at the top. So you can save that and then you can also preview it. You can preview on a desktop, tablet, mobile, or in a new tab. So let's just go through these real quick and this will show you the different versions of your site. Now, please keep in mind that this is a simulation. This is not a true to life um, example. The only and best way to do this is to preview it in a new tab, we'll let that generate, is to preview it in a new tab and then minimize or contract your browser to fit the different breakpoints. So this would be roughly a tablet. This would be the phone breakpoint. A breakpoint is a snapping point where the browser adjusts itself. It, it adjusts the, the design inside of it based on the dimensions and those dimensions replicate loosely your phone and tablet screens. Okay, so great, nice preview, looks good, cool. So now you can save a draft, you can preview, and then you can also publish. So I'm gonna go ahead and publish this. Now, when you publish, you can choose whether it's public visible, if it's private visible, which is only available to people that are logged in, or if it's password protected visible. Uh, I'll keep this public visible for now. You can choose to publish it immediately, or you can schedule your post to be sent out at a particular date and time. And then you can also add new tag words like bacon ipsum. Maybe I should spell that right. There we go. Great. So these are a part of the pre-published checks. Uh, this is a good system. Um, I re recommend keeping it on, it's just a good reminder. And let's go ahead and publish this page. And then you'll see in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a notification that the post was published. And here it is on the internet. ccac.studentsofdesign.com slash rthompson slash bacon ipsum. Perfect, okay. So let's go back to the dashboard, close this and take a, a look through some of these things. So now that it's published, if I wanna make a change, like a tip donor, you can bold that, hit update, hit refresh and tip donor is in bold. So that change was immediate. You can see the amount of revisions on any given page or posts, and you can see what specifically was changed. So you can see what was removed, what was added, et cetera. This is really great for historical reference. We talked about the permalink. You can see there's the verified permalink there. You can also condense these if the sidebar is a little too messy for you. Let's go ahead and add a category. So right now the blog is uncategorized, but I wanna make a new category. We're gonna call this bacon. And now the blog is a part of two categories, uncategorized and bacon. But I only want it to be under one category. So I'm going to uncheck um, uncategorized and only keep bacon. So if I search multiple categories, this post will only be found when I look through the bacon category. And now I'm hungry, thanks. Tag words, separate with commas or the enter key. So bacon, comma, ipsum. This can be a little tricky because your mind is thinking like, okay, bacon, comma, ipsum, comma, food, comma. But WordPress is going to make these individual 
tag words. These tag words are then added to an aggregate of tags and you can choose these for future reference uh, in other posts. Featured image, if you want your post to have a featured image, you can go to uh, select featured image and you can pull an image from your media library if you have images in there. If you don't, you can hit upload files, select files. And I am going to use, how fitting, a picture of a Lego sculpture. Uh, you see, you, you thought I was gonna add a picture of myself. So media library, there's your picture. Make sure you put alt text on there. This is an image of a Lego sculpture of the Cathedral of Learning. Select that alt text phrase, paste it. Ooh, it's storming. Set featured image. There we go. If you wanted to add an excerpt, basically a one sentence excerpt of your blog post, you could do that. And then if you wanted to enable discussion or comments, you could do that as well. Again, I, re I highly recommend you disable all comments. Um, you could probably allow pingbacks and trackbacks. That's probably fine. So let's hit update. Post is updated. Let's go over here and refresh. And there is my featured image and my text, my alt text, and then my body copy. Great. So that's essentially the posts section. To get back to all posts, hit the WordPress icon and you'll actually see there's the title of the post, the author, the category, everything you need. So you can also edit that. You can do a quick edit, which is more limited editing. You can trash it or you can view it, which would pull it up here just like that. So let's move on to categories. So I created the bacon category. You can see that here. It's going to show you the category name, the description of the category, what the URL slug is, and then how many posts are in that category. So I want to change one thing and I want to add a description for this category. All right, so that's been updated. And now you can see my category has a description. This enhances the experience for search engines and alt text. So this absolutely has value. Let's go to tags and you can see bacon, food and Ipsum. They're all there. You can see the slugs, how many posts that they are tethered to. I'm not going to do it, but ideally you do want to add a description. So it always makes sense to add your categories and your tags in these sections versus in the post itself, because you'll if you do it in the post itself, you don't have to come back and add these descriptive words. Okay, let's move on to media. So you saw me uh, upload this image of the Lego Cathedral. And if you click on that image, you're going to see the graphic. You can edit the image, but I do not recommend editing images in WordPress. It's just unnecessary and takes too long. Uh, and the only real thing you can do is resize an image. I'd rather have you do that in Photoshop. But when you click on that image, you'll be able to see when, what date it was uploaded on, by who, what post it's affixed to, what the file name is, what the format is, what the file size is, what the dimensions are. You'll be able to see the alt text and then you'll be able to see the full URL of the image. So if I not copy and paste that in, let's copy that and then Drop it in here. That should take me right to the image as it does. So we're good to go. Now you can add new images by hitting the add new button. You can drop files in here to upload or you can choose select files. So I'm going to uh, find an image. Let's find a good one. Uh, 
Uh, we'll use uh, Little Brother. If you're familiar with Strong Bad, you'll know what this is. So I dropped that in and it's so small that the file side, it just uploaded immediately. So you can drag and drop just like that. Notice that the maximum file size upload is 256 megabytes, okay? Do not try to install or upload heavy images uh, over even like two megabytes, three megabytes. All right. So let's take a break. Okay, had to take a quick water break there. So let's get back into it. So the next section is pages and it functions exactly like posts, uh, except that that small change where pages are static and evergreen um, and they're a part of your main navigation, whereas posts are more time-based. So Divi Builder is going to show you a completely different look to this, but I will jump in and show you uh, just what a sample page looks like. So if you go to pages, all pages, and then sample page, and then edit, you'll be able to see what this looks like. And again, this fairly familiar, all of the same settings, except uh, the permalink is pretty much going to be the same. With posts, if you have a category, it may add the category to the permalink. Um, with pages, it's going to just be slash and then whatever it is. So this has been posted and I'm gonna bold this sentence here, just so I know I made a change. And then I'm gonna hit update. And then let's view this page in a new tab. Here's my sample page, looks good. I don't see it in the navigation at all, which is fine, uh, we'll get there but it is live. So let's go back to pages and then we'll hover over comments. Right now there are no comments found, fortunately, but when you do see a comment, uh, you'll see who the author was, what the comment is, what post it was in response to and what date and time it was submitted on, okay? Uh, right now there are no comments found within the, the database. So I'm not going to create a new one just to show you and then delete it. All right, so I'm gonna skip appearance and plugins for the time being and just jump down to users and then all users. So you can see there's my handle, uh, there's my email, I'm an admin, I have one post. If you want to add a new user, you can hit add new. You put in their username, their email, first name, last name, website. You can generate a password, send them a notification of their account creation, and then apply what their rule is, their rule. Um, if they're an administrator, they have access to everything. If they're an editor, they have 75% access to everything. If they're an author, they have 50%, 25. And then as a subscriber, they practically have no access whatsoever. They have an account but when they log into the dashboard, they don't see anything unless you designate otherwise with a particular plugin. Okay, so let's actually view my profile. You can disable the visual editor when building. Of course, do not do that. Um, you can change the WordPress backgrounds to whatever you prefer. I say keep it simple and default. They chose it for a reason, and it's probably because it's the best way to work um, in terms of contrast. Scrolling down, show toolbar when on site, you can uncheck that. You can enable keyboard shortcuts, add the first name, last name, nickname. You can display your, you can choose how you want your name displayed. Contact info, that's my, personal Gmail, add a bio. You can change your profile image. I would recommend creating a Gravatar account first and then mapping your required email to that Gravatar account. Note that when you do this, if you have to do a password retrieval, it's going to go to your personal 
email and not your CCAC email, unless you use your CCAC email to create a Gravatar account, which I'm not sure you can do. You can also set a new password. You can log out everywhere. So if you logged in on one computer or you're logged in on several computers, you can log out everywhere. And then of course you can update your profile. I'm going to ignore application passwords for now. The next section is tools. So the available tools right now are categories and tag converters. Um, this is where you can convert categories to tag words or tag words to categories. It's just a nice efficiency and you're going to find that WordPress has a lot of those, um, but they're very specific and not always effective. It depends on who the plugin author is. If you go to import, you can import content from Blogger, LiveJournal, RSS feeds, Tumblr, other WordPress sites. You can export content as posts, only, only your posts, only your pages, only your media, which does not actually include your images. It's just like a, a record of your media. And then you can also export all of your content. These will be generated as XML files, which you would then import into another WordPress website. Next page here is site health. Right now, uh, this is saying that the site health is good. It has one recommended improvement, remove inactive themes. So if you're not using it, it's just taking up space, get rid of it. Click on info. This will give you more pointed information. You can actually see how big your website is. This is a 43 megabyte website. Um, the site I built for at business.pit.edu, I think is over two gigabytes. So sites can get really gigantic, but they're not loading two gigs all at the same time. So you can take a look at this if you like. Um, there's some interesting information. On the left-hand side, if you click on export personal data, you can export your personal data or you can erase it if you want. Um, this is useful if you build a website for a client, you have a login to their site, they have one and they decide, hey, we don't need your help anymore or we're gonna work with someone else, then you can go in and erase your personal data. So that way you are no longer affiliated with the website that you built. The next section is settings. These are the general settings by default. So you can name your website. You can add the site title. You can add a tagline. Do not ever change the WordPress address URL or the site address URL. Just because you can doesn't mean you should, all right? Uh, you can change your administrative email address, um, but uh, I don't recommend that either. If you, you all should have received an email, it might have hit your spam filters. So please check your spam filters for confirmation on your site creation. Um, but you should all be able to log in with what I gave you. If you want people to join, you can choose anyone can register. If, if and when they do register, this would be their default role. I would always recommend not letting anyone register. And then if they do, keep it as a subscriber. You can choose your site language. Some of you in here may be multilingual. So you can change this to uh, a language that is perhaps your first language or one that you prefer. You can also change the time zone, date format, time format, and what day of the week starts on. So I'm gonna save those changes and refresh and you can see it says sample page hyphen bacon ipsum so my change was immediate the next section is writing so you can actually create a post on your wordpress website via email i'm not going to show you how to do this because it's an archaic practice and i don't think it's worth your time the next section is reading so your home page right now displays your latest posts if you want it to display a static page, a certain page that you create, you can select that. 
Um, just make sure that when you do this, you have a page that represents posts and then a page that represents home page. So you do need to select. I do not recommend uh, your choice of being sample page and then just select here. You need a place for your blog posts to go even if you're not actively using them. Your blog page at most shows however many posts you want. Right now it's set to 10. Your RSS feed shows no more than 10 items at a time. For each post in a feed, you can show the full text or a summary. I recommend a summary. And then if you don't want search engines to find your website, just check this so that they won't find it. Now that is not a guarantee that they won't, but it's basically a request to the search engines to not crawl your website and add it to their directory or their index. The next section is discussion. So I would recommend not enabling discussion on your website. So keep these top three checked. Actually, uh, uncheck these bottom two, but um, keep that one checked. You don't want people to submit new comments on posts. Other comment settings, you wanna make it as difficult as possible for people to comment. So they have to fill out their name and email. They have to be registered and logged in. Their comment closes after 14 days. When you're making a post, you have to consciously uncheck the comments. Otherwise, it will show up at, by default. This is a fail safe that blocks them from commenting. So you can kind of set it and forget it. Email me whenever anyone posts a comment or a comment is held for moderation. Keep those checked. Before a comment appears, you must approve it. It needs moderation. And then the comment author must have a previously approved comment. So again, these are two checks that act as a fail safe to one another. Comment moderation, these are curse words. You can find lists of curse words or blacklist words and just paste them in here, as well as in the disallowed comment keys. If you want to enable avatars in your comments section, you can do so by checking here or um, uh, under default avatar rather. If you have Gravatar logo, you can default to that. Otherwise it's just going to randomly generate different icon designs or just remain blank. The next setting is media. So when you import an image, it's going to come in in three different sizes, thumbnail, medium, and large. So when you upload one image, three additional ones will be created. These are the dimensions at which these will be created. These are standard. Again, I do not recommend you changing them. And then also I do recommend you maintaining, organize my uploads into a month and year-based folders. It's very organized this way. The next section is permalinks. This is where you choose what your URL structure looks like. Um, it's best for search engine optimization to choose by post name, which is set at default, but you can change that. You can also have a custom structure. Again, I do not recommend doing that. Uh, keep it simple and stick with post name, okay? Um, you can ignore this optional, these optional settings for now. The last setting is privacy. So you can create a new privacy page you can change your privacy policy. Here's your policy guide. Um, you can actually change this here as well. Um, most of your, so privacy policies are something that are becoming more popular and required by way of laws, be it in states or countries. So uh, privacy policy guides are becoming more and more important. Um, if you collect emails, I would recommend having a privacy policy page. But if you do not, and it's just for your portfolio, I don't think this is totally necessary. Okay, so let's look at appearance. Right now, you've got three different themes uh, active on the website. We've got 2021, 2019, and 2020. These are the default themes that come with WordPress. Um, if you are not using a theme, click on it, and then in the bottom right-hand corner, hit delete. You'll be prompted to confirm the deletion, hit okay. 
and it's gone. Same thing here. Hit delete, hit OK. I do recommend keeping one default theme in case Divi breaks for whatever reason. Uh, this will load. You will have a site that loads. Um, if you delete the default, all or um, all but one default theme, or rather, if you delete all of the default themes and then Divi breaks, your site just isn't going to work. Okay, so it's nice to have a backup. Um, but this is the 2021 theme that you're looking at here. If you don't like this theme and you don't want to use Divi, you can hit the add new button and you're going to be able to find literally thousands of different themes are available to you. And these are just the free ones. There are thousands more that are premium that you have to pay for. Um, I might have mentioned it in a lecture, but there's the Avada theme, which has sold like $35 million. It's been sold so many times, it's ridiculous. Okay. Uh, you can also upload your own theme. Um, you will not be doing that in this class, at least with Divi Builder. Uh, Divi Builder is, well, actually, you will update, you will upload Divi Builder as a theme. You will not upload it as a plugin. Anyway, we have a theme installed. When you, um, want to find other themes, you can click the details, make sure they have a high rating, um, make sure that they are available. Um, Elementor is a lot like Divi, except it, it's a bit more uh, technical, so I wouldn't recommend installing that one. Um, Astra has good rankings out of 4,954 people. It's at version 364, which means there's been a lot of iterations of it. This could work. I don't know why it's not loading here. Okay, so test them out. Use your use your site to be a sandbox and uh, test them out. You can always delete them. If you install a, a theme and it breaks and you can't access your site, please let me know and I can fix that for you via the FTP. The next section is customize. So this is going to allow you to customize all different manner of uh, aspects of the, the default theme. So you can click on these little pencil marks and it will take you directly to where you want to go. So there's the site title and the tagline. If you wanted to add a site icon or a site logo, you could do that. We'll use little brother. Make a new, we can make a site icon out of them as well. Hit crop image, there we go. Hit publish. So now the site has a logo and it has a favicon. Yeah, see now you can see the favicon, which is great. You can also change the, the modes. So if you wanna do like dark mode, you can turn that on. I don't know what that does necessarily for this theme. Oh, it's a device setting. So basically the website will tell your phone to load this up in dark mode. If you want, you can change the background color. Great, let's publish that. You can add a background image. I would not recommend doing that because it will eliminate your foreground background contrast. Uh, you can create menus here. This is not the best way to create a menu, but it is one way to do it. Um, there are so many different ways to create menus in WordPress. So let's create a menu here. We can add items. So we'll add sample page. And then we can publish that. And now you'll see sample pages up here in the nav menu. And again, those changes are immediate. Widgets, you can add widgets. Widgets are specialized coding scripts or snippets that offer particular functions. So if you wanted to add a search or a gallery, for example, to um, your website as a widget, you can add those images, create a new gallery, insert the gallery, there, and essentially there's the widget, or maybe. Um, there's the widget. This is the logo. Yeah. So you can edit that and you can see one, two, three images. 
let's call this Lil Brudder. For those that are familiar with Homestar Runner, if you're not, I wholly, I wholeheartedly recommend you check it out immediately. Go ahead and publish that. Let's see if the changes replicate. They absolutely do. So let's click on one of our images. There it is. Great. Homepage settings, we covered this. It's just home page and post pages. Excerpt settings, summary, full text, and then additional CSS you can add here. I do not recommend doing that. However, um, generally when you choose a theme, you wanna choose one based on its full design capability. So it mitigates the amount of coding you have to do, of which in some cases there may be none. Okay, so let's take a look at those widgets again, and you can actually see this theme has one widgetized area, and that's in the footer, which is where that gallery took place, uh, exists. So you can actually move these around. You can add new ones, or I don't want to delete that, but you can delete other ones if you're not using them. There we go, gone. So now uh, we should search recent posts and recent comments should go away. Boom, gone, awesome. Menus, again, another way to control menus. So here are all your pages, posts, you can add custom links. Add to the menu. You can move these up and down however you like. You can add categories if you want. You can make the pages subordinate. So here's what they, the nav menu looks like when both of these are siblings. The, the, this is called a sibling relationship. They are equal. So you can see both links right there. And then if you make one a child link, the relationship now becomes the parent, which is sample page, and the child, which is Google. Let's save that and refresh over here. And now you can see there's a drop down there. So now there's a subordinate relationship. This is how you can add your menu. You can also manage the locations of your menu. So I can make my primary and my secondary menu the same menu. Or I can go to edit menus and create a new menu, let's call this footer. And I can add items here. Save that. Let's refresh. and it would show up down here, provided that there's a, a menu widget. So let's pop over to widgets and let's pull a menu. Where is it? Nav menu. And then we can choose the footer menu. You can title this if you want. Hit refresh. And there it is. So WordPress is extremely efficient in getting things done. Again, we're going to ignore background. So let's talk about plugins. So if you click on plugins, you'll find that there are three installed plugins, uh, SiteGround Optimizer, SiteGround Security. Please keep them active. Do not deactivate them. Um, you can also add new ones. But before we add a new one, let's take a look at what we got here. So there are three plugins, three are active, three have auto updates disabled. I always recommend disabling auto updates because your website could update as soon as an update is available and then break. You need to be prepared in case something happens. Always be prepared, just like the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts, okay? Um, so let's add a, a, a plugin. So you go to plugins, add new, you're gonna see a variety of different options here. These are typically the most popular, and these are also the ones created by Automatic, the people who own 
WordPress who created it, as well as the Gutenberg team, which is an automatic team, and WordPress.org, BuddyPress, these are all the same. Um, I'm going to go ahead and type in, uh, let's say, Monster Insights. Monster Insights is a plugin that coordinates with Google Analytics. You'd have to create an account there. Um, but uh, it tells you what your, your hit stats are, who's visiting your website, how and when. There's practically a plugin for any kind of need that you may have. So you have to be very discerning on what you want to be a plugin or not. Just because your website can do everything doesn't mean it should, okay? One of the ways that you can discern from a good plugin versus a bad one, they may do the same exact thing, but there are good ones and there are bad ones. The difference between a good one is, well, the difference with a good one rather, it's updated recently, anywhere from, I would say less than six months, depending on what the plugin does. Ideally, the, the less amount of time, the better. So two weeks ago, this plugin was updated, awesome. So I know that it's compatible with my version of WordPress, as is Monster Insights. So it's compatible, it was updated relatively recently. There are over 3 million active installations and there are over 2,381 reviews, all of, of which they uh, average at four and a half stars. So I know that this is probably a pretty good plugin. Whereas a bad plugin would have low reviews, low stars, low downloads. It wouldn't have been updated within the past year, and it may not even be compatible with WordPress. So I'm interested in this one. Let's take a look. Before you install a plugin, always read the description, the installation, the FAQ, the change log, the screenshots, and the reviews, okay? Make sure that the version is up to date, time works out, compatible with WordPress, compatible with your version of PHP, which you'll be able to find through your hosting provider. And um, if you feel good about it, you can hit install now and WordPress will immediately install that. Once it's installed, you can activate it. And voila, check this out. Now you've got a new insights section here uh, underneath dashboard and then also on the left-hand bottom navigation. Watch the video, launch the wizard and you'll be good to go, okay? So again, there are plugins for practically everything. Uh, I would recommend you reach out to me if you're unsure about a particular plugin. I'm happy to assist you there. Okay, so this for the most part has been your uh, WordPress diagnostic. Um, the next uh, lecture will be on Divi Builder. So good luck, have fun, and uh, enjoy breaking WordPress and learning about it in the most and best way possible by experiencing it.